Hello everyone, I am Dr. Pallavi Borua, Assistant Professor at Spidora College and today I am going to discuss on the poem Christabel by S.T. Coleridge. So in today's class, I will introduce you to the poem, we will understand the plot and the setting of Christabel, analyze the different characters and finally discuss the major themes of the poem followed by few questions. So. Let's start. Christabel is an unfinished Gothic ballet written by Samuel Taylor Coleridge and it was published in the year 1816. Now, what is meant by the term Gothic and ballet? Gothic is a genre or mode of literature and film that merges fiction with horror, death and also romance. Ballet, on the other hand, is a form of verse or a type of poem, often a narrative poem set to musical rhythm. Ballets derive from the medieval French language, which were originally dance songs. Christabel is Coleridge's longest yet unfinished poem, beautifully musical in nature and is his least revised but most satisfying to himself as he confesses in the preface and also his most troubling poem to the readers. It was published in a pamphlet in 1816 alongside Kubla Khan and the Pains of Sleep. Coleridge, as we already know, belonged to the Romantic Age in English literature and in this unfinished poem, Christabel, Coleridge writes about the mysterious meeting and the interaction between two women that exposes romantic ideas regarding the interaction of humans, nature and the supernatural world. This takes us to the term Romanticism and the Romantic Age in English Literature. The Romantic period in English literature began in the late 1700s and lasted through the mid-1800s. Romanticism focuses on the emotional side of human nature. It stresses on individualism, appreciates the beauty of the natural world, and values the simplicity of common people. It was more of an artistic, literary and intellectual movement that originated in Europe. Romantic authors such as William Wordsworth, S.T. Coleridge, John Keats, among others, value sentimental, heartfelt feelings and emotional experiences over historical and scientific facts. Scholars regard the publishing of William Wordsworth and Samuel Taylor Coleridge's lyrical ballads in the year 1798 as probably the beginning of the movement and the crowning of Queen Victoria in 1837 as its end. So now let's look on to Asti Coleridge, his life and works. Samuel Taylor Coleridge was a literary critic and a poet and is one of the most well-known and highly read English poet of the Romantic movement. He is a much respected poet critic of modern English tradition, distinguished for the scope and influence of his thinking about literature as much as for his innovative poems. He was active from the beginning of the French Revolution as a dissenting pamphleteer and also a preacher. He inspired a brilliant generation of writers and attracted the patronage of progressive men of the rising middle class. Coleridge was born on October 21st, 1772 in England and was a friend to poet Wordsworth. He was the co-founder of the English Romantic Movement and his best known poems are The Rhyme of the Ancient Marina, his allegorical seafaring poem and Kubla Khan which was reported written under the influence of opium. 
Coleridge also wrote many noteworthy short poems such as The Nightingale and also Dejection and Ode among others. He died in the year 1834. Christopher is Coleridge's longest and one of his dreamy poems set in a musical rhythm. Now let us look at the major characters and the plot of the poem. In the poem we have four major characters. We also have a fifth character who is being referred to but never appears in the poem. Our first character is Christopher who is the titular character and the protagonist of the poem. Christopher is referred to as our lovely lady by Coleridge and she is the daughter of a rich but old baron and the owner of the castle, Sir Leoline. Our second character is Geraldine and not Geraldine for the sake of the rhythm and the rhyme scheme. She is the antagonist of the poem. Christabel finds her in the woods. At first, Geraldine seems to be an innocent damsel in distress until Christabel sees her evil side. Our third character is Sir Leoline, who is Christabel's father. He is a rich baron who is wealthy enough to afford his own castle and a private poet. He is old and also weak in health. He seems to be a fairly broken man due to the death of his wife during childbirth. Our fourth character is Bracy the Bard and he is the private poet of Sir Leoline. Under the impression that Geraldine is the daughter of his estranged friend, Sir Leoline sends him to Sir Rola de Vaux, Geraldine's father, supposed father, to extend a welcoming message. And our fifth character is Sir Rola de Vaux, Geraldine's supposed father and an old estranged friend of Sir Leoline. Now let us look at the plot of Christopher. Christopher begins with the lines, quote unquote, just the middle of night by the castle clock and the owls have awakened the crowing cock. So we see that from the beginning Coleridge sets the supernatural and the mysterious tone of his dark poem. The poem starts off in the middle of the night at 12 o'clock which is considered to be the hour of the spirits and our protagonist Christabel our lovely lady wakes up from a strange dream at the stroke of the midnight and journeys into the woods outside of her father's castle to pray for the well-being of her lover the knight by the large oak tree. There she comes across a mysterious stranger, a damsel in distress named Geraldine who was supposedly abducted from her home by five men on horseback and whom Christabel pities and offers to help and finally invites her to her father's castle. Christabel and Geraldine spend the night together where Christabel is put under an evil spell by Geraldine and finally uh, in the mid, uh, morning, upon being introduced, Christabel's father, Sir Leoline, becomes enchanted with Geraldine, while Bracy, uh, the bard, has a uh, mysterious dream that casts doubts on Geraldine's identity. So when uh, Christabel's father, Sir Leoline, gets to know that Geraldine is the daughter of his long estranged friend, Sir Roland de Vaux. He extends a welcoming message and sends Bracy the Bard to visit him. But Bracy denies since he had a dream the previous night which involves a dove symbolically representing Christabel being trapped by a snake. Here it represents Geraldine. 
Bracy conveys this message to Sir Leoline, but to no avail because he is en enchanted and infatuated by Geraldine's beauty. Unfortunately, before any confirmation on Geraldine's identity can be confirmed or denied, the poem abruptly ends. Now, let us look at the structure of the poem Christabel. As stated by Coleridge in the preface to the poem, this poem was left unfinished. It was divided into four parts, the two narrative parts with a conclusion to every part. And uh, the first part tells about the mysterious uh, discovery of Geraldine by Christabel and their developing relationship. The conclusion to part one summarizes the events yet offers no actual conclusion. Part two introduces two new characters, Sir Leoline and Bracy the Bard, and the occurrence of events is interwoven with Christabel's supernatural visions of Geraldine's changing form. The conclusion to part two is the most disconnected of all the sections of the poem, offering a whimsical general illustration of a young child and the struggles one faces in the relationship between a father and a child. The lack of cohesion in the four parts of the poem, along with inconsistent overall structure, raises many important questions such as is the poem meant to be unfinished or are certain things meant to remain unanswered such as who is Geraldine and how did she reach uh, the woods next to Christabel's castle and many other such questions. Now let us look at some of the major themes in the poem. The first and the most obvious theme that we notice is the concept of good versus evil. And throughout the poem Christabel, there is a very strong presence of this concept of good and evil. The two central characters appear to represent both of these qualities, Christopher, the good, the pious, the pure, and Geraldine, the evil, the dark, and the mysterious character. The forces of good and evil seem to be in conflict during the poem as the effect of Geraldine's evil qualities appear to test Christabel's good ones. For example, uh, Christabel is ashamed that she feels drawn to watch Geraldine undress. Uh, Christabel appreciates Geraldine's beauty which is almost devilish. Geraldine's spell significantly affects Christabel's ability to communicate with her father, Sir Leoline. And also Geraldine's relationship with Sir Leoline causes Christabel to feel anger and jealousy. Another theme that is noticed in the poem is religiosity. Along with the presence of good and evil in Christabel, is the relation of these concepts to origin of good and evil as presented in the Bible or in the biblical literature. The two characters first meet in a garden as Christabel prays, much like the Garden of Eden as described in the Bible. Geraldine, uh, the bright green snake line number 537 appears to represent temptation as the snake tempts Adam and Eve in the origin of sin. 
sin and fear of sin plays a large role in the transformation of Christabel as a character. After watching Geraldine undress, Christabel remarks, Sure, I have sinned. Line number 369. And also the narrator calls uh, Jesu, Maria, shield her well. Line number 56. And it keeps on repeating throughout the poem as if the writer or the poet is calling upon God to help our lovely lady Christabel. And Jesus and Mary is asked to protect Christabel from the powers of the evil Geraldine. In addition to simply the concept of good and evil, it also suggested that Geraldine's influence is that of the devil who has come to test Christabel's innocence and perhaps fate. The third theme that is very obvious throughout the poem is the theme of mysticism, which is Coleridge's most prominent features. Geraldine is controlled by a mysterious spell in the poem and she puts the same spell on Christabel. Once Christabel recovers from the spell, she seems to have changed. Christabel's compassion for Geraldine has vanished and she begs her father to cast Geraldine out of their home. Christabel goes from being generous to selfish, jealous, and insecure. The taint of spells upon Geraldine and Christabel suggest the destructive powers of mysticism. Now let us do a character analysis of the major characters. Christabel, the protagonist, being the pious woman that she is, offers to help Geraldine and becomes increasingly wary of Geraldine especially after she realizes that Geraldine is a supernatural character and has put a spell on Christabel. Christabel's character is fairly consistent throughout the poem and uh, in comparison to Geraldine who is the antagonist of the poem and uh, the relationship between Christabel and Geraldine signifies the contrast between the divine and the wicked, the good and the bad. Uh, we meet Geraldine as Christabel finds her in the woods after being kidnapped by five men. At first, she is this innocent damsel in distress and as Christabel reveals to her that she has lost her mother, Geraldine shows a more disturbing side having an aggressive argument with the spirit of Christabel's mother. Geraldine paints herself as the evil image of Christabel. Line number 202 Oh mother dear, what thou wert here? I would, said Geraldine, she wear. But soon with altered voice, said she, of wandering mother, Peak and pine, I have power to beat thee flee. Alas, what ails poor Geraldine? Why stares she with unsettled eye? Can she the bodiless dead espy? And why with hollow voice cries she, Off woman, off, this hour is mine. Though thou her guardian spirit be, Off woman, off. It's given to me. Okay, so we see that Geraldine shows a more disturbing side and has an aggressive argument with the spirit of Christabel's mother. So Leoline becomes infatuated and enchanted with Geraldine in the poem and uh, is enchanted uh, with her in both a fatherly as well as a romantic way. He appears to begin favoring the new woman, woman over her own daughter, perhaps as a way of filling some of the emptiness he has felt living without a wife.
finally we come towards the conclusion of um, the analysis of Christabel and what we see in the poem it drives the readers almost mad from its beginning with two to uh, to its lulling almost uh, you know rep uh, continuous repetitions of uh, reiterating uh, sentences such as is the night chilly and dark the night is chilly but not dark it's uh, shifting narrative voices and its metrical hesitations Coleridge's opening section thus to listeners what Geraldine does to Christabel leaves them anxious and ungrounded. Critic after critic has tossed interpretations into the poem's dark fluxion, all unfixable by thought. Each interpretation seems to work as well as as well as the next, even if the interpretations are contradictory. Some see the heroine, Christabel, initiated into love. Some see her as a more or less innocent Eve falling into the snares of a demon from prenatural realms or from Satan. Some see the poem as having no meaning besides the complex contradictions of language and voice. And also some see as divided states of body and soul. Some others see it as a dream or many dreams with condensed or displaced images. And there are many others who call the poem obscene or incompetent. But finally it rests upon us, the readers, as how we want to cope with this poem, which is unfinished, uncertain, hallucinatory, and dreamy. So we have seen that Christabel is an unfinished poem by Coleridge. The poem is 677 lines, and uh, Coleridge planned two more sections to the poem, which he never finished. I'd love to know how would you have ended the poem. So uh, try thinking over it using your imaginative and creative side. And in conclusion to this class, I'd also like you to attempt writing a few answers. I am giving you a few questions. The first is, Discuss the symbolism of light and darkness used in Coleridge's Christabel and how it impacts the overall theme of the work. I have already talked about uh, Bracey the Bard's dream, remember? How the dove symbolizes Christabel and the snake symbolizes Geraldine. You can talk about that and also about uh, this wood symbolizes the garden of eden and uh, so you can talk about that how they also symbolize good and evil our second question today is which is the supernatural presence other than geraldine indicated in the poem christabel here you can talk about the mysticism and uh, that is present in the play and also how um, the spirit of the mother the presence of the spirit of the mother which is alluded to and also how geraldine becomes very uncomfortable when uh, christabel talks about the death of her mother and the presence of the spirit so the setting in general, the gothic setting in general, you can talk about um, the supernatural elements in the poem. I hope this class lecture is going to help you. See you in my next class with a new topic. Thank you.